Thanks for tuning in to the Beyond Normal podcast, where we highlight minority business owners and founders, and we use this platform to shed light on their entrepreneur journey. Welcome, welcome everybody to uh, uh, another uh, episode on a Friday with the Beyond Normal podcast. Uh, we got a, a, a two for uh, for everybody uh, today. We got two amazing founders uh, that are in an interesting space. We want to make sure we brought them on together. I think there's going to be some, some amazing synergies throughout the conversation. Uh, we're going to hop right into things. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, our sponsors over at Valorit. Again, Valorid has been an amazing, amazing partner for us. Um, they're doing some amazing things in the import uh, space. So if you got a product and you want your product to be, you know, everywhere around the world, uh, make sure you don't just uh, import it, but you Valorid. it. All right. Uh, but again, they've been an amazing partner for us, curated this list of founders with us for this season. So excited to bring on our, our two guests. Uh, first up, uh, we have uh, Carlene. Uh, she is the founder, uh, CEO of uh, Citibit, uh, which is uh, doing amazing work, providing uh, virtual activities for kids. Um, you know, uh, we all are in this remote environment here. So I, I think it's so critical to have something for everybody to do in, in the space when we're, we're all at home. We're all trying to utilize, you know, have, have, have our time utilized the right way. So uh, glad to have you on uh, today, Carlene. And then we also have uh, Tim. Uh, I think uh, he go also goes by uh, Mr. Future of Work, but Tim uh, has a company called the Guide App. Uh, they're doing amazing things around learning and development, career development. They've got an amazing platform that Tim and his team is building out there. But excited to have you both on today on, on, on the platform. How are you both doing today? We're doing well. Thanks so much. Doing for having fabulous. Me. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks for having me. For sure. For sure. Uh, so I want to, uh, you know, Start out uh, setting the stage. I, I want to start with you, Carlene. Tell folks a little bit around, about yourself, your journey into being a founder. We always start our episodes with this. We want to learn as much as we can uh, about you as the founder to set the stage. This journey to starting Citibit has been about nine years. I am uh, the single mother of a nine-year-old and... Um, have spent 20 some odd years in enterprise technology in various um, uh, uh, capacities. And one of the things that has always stuck out as a problem for me is that when I needed to um, engage my child in an enriching activity, whether it was in person or virtually, it was a, a logistical nightmare. Uh, finding a, a vendor, scheduling, managing payments, and so forth. And um, for nine years as my child grew, this became more and more prevalent problem in my life. So at the beginning of 2020, I decided to um, start a company, which is a technology company that, that brings to market a marketplace of best-in-breed providers so that parents can easily find and book and manage um, activities that address the entire spectrum of what childcare is. So beyond simply babysitters and daycare, but into areas like academic support, social and emotional development, um, arts, music, dance, theater, STEM-based learning. And we bring it all together and help parents easily engage in those activities. That's how I got here. Thanks for that breakdown, Carlene. Uh, you, you just diving into to, to your company purpose and passion, um, you know, spot on right there. And, and in our current times, I want to pass it over to Mr. Future of Work. Uh, tell us a little bit around your uh, journey into being a founder. Oh, it's been quite a journey. God has been in business for two and a half years now. We were founded when I was living in Seattle. Now I live in Houston. Texas, and it's been a glorious journey. You know, every day is, is tough, but it's not easy. But you know, when you are building something that you believe in, you know, you're you're doing it for the for the good of your customers. To be honest with you, and you know, initially we started with the 
kind of idea of building something for life skills training for high school students. And then over time, we evolved and we actually pivoted our company during COVID-19 to focusing more on onboarding and training for enterprise remote teams. And then on the latter end of the year last year, around October, we actually launched an amazing new line of business called Big Black Tea, which is also a part of the Guy brand. And that's been an incredibly successful business for us. In fact, you know, now that we launched that business, most people in the market see us as a lifestyle brand, including our customers. So we've had to really adapt to, to supporting their lifestyle and uh, the lifestyle they want to have with us, uh, more importantly. So, you know, it's been quite a journey, but we've been incredibly grateful to be growing in the direction that, you know, that aligns to our mission, which is equip every creator with the skills, mindset, and opportunities for fulfilling career. Thanks for that breakdown there, uh, Mr. Future Work, Tim. Uh, so, so you both touched on something, uh, in, in, in your breakdowns around, uh, probably, you know, during the, the, the start of the pandemic or like right before that, right. There was this opportunity that you saw the pain point was the most clear, most evident, right. During that time, like, what have you seen, like in terms of may, maybe overall trends in terms of the way people are uh, adapting to this new environment overall, Carly, I want to pass it to you first, because I, I think you started yeah. to allude to it. Um, as you said, that you were starting to, to really, to really uh, see your business um, come to fruition two years ago. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we've all, when you think about the fact that we have, as an entire humanity, all gone through a major trauma globally, um, and so many families have children who um, were in flux, essentially, and you know, we all read the news, millions of women leaving the workforce, um, employees deciding to leave careers or change careers, um, embracing the fact that virtual does work um, and that they um, have seen the benefits of being able to work remotely and, and so forth. One of the things that I think is sort of disheartening now is that we're 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 still sort of in a place of flux, um, and we're not um, we're not clear about what the future is going to hold. And so, this adoption of um, virtual, particularly activities for kids that have um, traditionally been held in person, folks are really realizing that the value of um, academic support or language learning and those sorts of things. Um, have really, uh, really have a lot of benefit, work very well. And on top of that, there's a lot of ancillary benefits that people aren't willing to give up as a family, right? Having the fam, being able to take the classes and the activities at home while the parents are able to do other things or um, take on a new career or a new job that has sort of an unstructured schedule, but be able to fill your child's time with enriching activities is something that people are really um, gravitating to. So we're really excited about being able to provide um, and take advantage of the technologies that are available to us to really enable how we all work and manage our lives moving forward. Thanks for that, Tim. Did you want to add on directly to that? I think 100% to what Carlene is saying is that times are changing uh, right now. And it's you have to be awake. You know, I talk to a lot of business leaders who sometimes aren't aware of what's happening in the ecosystem right now. And one of the biggest trends that I'm seeing is this refocus on localization, which is essentially people caring more about the communities that they live in fundamentally post COVID 19, as well as their health, holistic health. So you're seeing wearable technology boom as well during times like this and you know for us we've been in the learning and development business for two and a half years now and we are about to you know showcase our uh, our public offering um after incubating the product the last two and a half years now and it's i mean that trend is always going to be there you know personalized learning has always been an important thing to be honest with you and i believe with where 
things are going in the tech industry, you're going to need to focus more on empowering people, um, whether it be helping them, you know, have better interactions with technology or creating tools that make their lives better. You know, at the end of the day, what we're fundamentally doing as builders, as CEOs, um, as business owners is that we're developing tools for people to live a better life. You know, tools like Citibit, tools like Guy, uh, they go a long way for families as well as, you know, just fundamentally people who want to live a better lifestyle. And I'm really, really excited to kind of continue keeping track of this trend and hopefully ensuring that God is playing a role in this future. Well said there, Tim. And, uh, you know, when I think of uh, the, the, the work that you're doing, Carlene, around kids actually learning differently, you know, um, you know just given our current environment, uh, we as adults are learning uh, how to navigate this as yeah. well. Right. And, and so I want to transition a little bit in, in terms of some of the learnings that you both um, have had to go through as founders. Right. I, I, I always boil this down to, you know, what is you know, what are what is that one thing that you've learned throughout this process? Right. That you wish you could have had at the very beginning, like that, that golden nugget. Um, I want to start with you there, Carlene, because I know I know you got plenty of uh, <laughs> experiences you can pull from building your your, your, your company. I think a better understanding of how hard it actually is. Um, a better appreciation of how hard it actually is uh, to start a company, particularly a technology company. And, you know, it has, for me, um, going through this journey has, has done two things for me. So it is really allowed me every single day to learn something new that I knew nothing about previously. So that's a, a huge gift um, to have to be responsible for areas of the business that, you know, I was never exposed to previously. And um, the buck stops with you as a founder, right? You, you have to figure it out and you will figure it out and you, you just do it. But then the next thing is, <laughs> so the uh but then on top of it it's um a lot of you know um the other benefit that i personally have gotten is it has really solidified my belief that what i'm doing is needed in the market not only because of the people I talk to or the validation I get externally, but because I live it every single day. I mean, like you just saw my son come and sit down in the office and, you know, he, I, being able to have him engage in activities that are beyond just, you know, sort of maybe watching TV or YouTube videos that he enjoys and he's expanding his mind outside of school day um, in extracurricular time is, is just really validating for me. So the market is validating my, um, my activity. And uh, before you chime in there, Tim, I just want to say, uh, I think it, it really is, uh, it, it really does align with your company, right? Having some, having your kid walk into the room, Carly, right? It, it really yeah. speaks to, <laughs> <laughs> like the whole yeah. point of sit a bit. And so I just want to exactly. say, you know, I, I, I want to uh, say thank him for coming into the room and prove, proving your business model. <laughs> I, I just wanna... wrote him a note and said, not now. <laughs> <laughs> he so, knows better. No worries. And so, Tim, I want to uh, transition to you, you know, what in terms of, you know, what's that, what's that learning that you um, have had, you know, throughout this uh, process that you wish you would have known at the very beginning? Oh, uh, I, I mean, you know, as you build a business, you're always learning. I want to be very frank and adamant about that. You know, there's not a day you're not for it. Um, and that's because you're a business owner. Your business should change and should be adapting with the market. My biggest learning, though, is that, and I want to be very, I want to put this simply put, some people are crazy. <laughs> some people are crazy. <laughs> you know, no, seriously, I want to be very frank about it. Like, some people are really crazy um, when it comes to, uh, I guess, building a business in terms of like how you want to build a relationship with them, um, how you want to negotiate deals, you know, you, you meet a lot of, and, I, and this is me being very frank as a business owner here, you meet a lot of crazy people in the sense of they just don't want to do good business. 
And I think for me, that's been kind of surprising. Um, and I want to also, I, you know, I, I always say this because I, I, you, I've worked in technology for quite some time, not way too long. And I still like meet people who I would love to partner with as a business owner, but sometimes their corporate values or their corporate ethics or their corporate culture doesn't align with guys. So we can't work together, but then it goes down to potentially just looking at the numbers, not right from a partnership standpoint, Right. And it just, you know, things don't align. And that's, that's been really surprising to me because, you know, whenever I think of myself as a business owner, I always try to put my, my best foot forward. Um, especially when it comes to protecting our brand and guiding our business. So, you know, you will meet a lot of crazy people along the way as a business owner and as a founder. And it's really important for you to be very level-headed um, and be very pragmatic because, you know, if you have crazy people all in your business, your business is going to get crazy. So that's uh, that's just words to wise. Right. I love it. The crazy people. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's gonna be that, that that's gotta be a click that we definitely snip it for folks. Um and, and the answers you both uh you know alluded to, you know, it's it that that question is very open ended and and being a founder is a very dynamic thing, right? You you mentioned you touched on it, Carlene, right, where you're you're probably tapping into uh skills that you don't normally utilize, right? We all not a nine to five is really you, you work in your specific function, accounting, sales, IT, whatever, right? And you 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 hone your craft there. You dig as deep as you can, right? But as that founder, you, you almost gotta dig, you know, maybe an inch deep, but then you know a mile wide, right? And so yeah. uh it that that is always an interesting question to hear answers from and, and being a founder, you both have both have alluded to it is a very dynamic process, right? Yeah. So, yeah, and I'll, go ahead, I'll go ahead, add, uh, sorry, I'll just add one point is to that is one of the things in, in this maybe because everybody was on lockdown for the last 18 months. But, you know, Kenny, we were talking a little bit about Twitter before we started. Um, there is an incredible community of uh, folks on Twitter that are ready, willing and able to help up a phone or offer advice now to tim's point i would say you know take a lot of it with grain of salt and really go in with your eyes open around who you're taking advice from or who you're talking to but i mean as an example tim and i know each other because we met each other on twitter um but so many people i've been able to tap into for areas that i know nothing about that have helped me sort of gain those skills so um, the community is out there, and it's very, very strong. Got you. And um, it, it's very uh, kind of timely that you brought up the uh, that term community, right? Arlene, I, I think, uh, Tim, you, you you touched on it a little bit as well. But um, from even from my personal perspective, it's been amazing, right, just being able to have some of these conversation, conversations. Carlene, you mentioned Twitter. I, two, three years ago, I wouldn't have did this, right? I'm a sales guy. I would have been on the road. Yeah. You know, I got to do face to face. Right. But Twitter, Clubhouse, all these different avenues, all these different channels have really allowed us to to figure out what our community is, our tribe is. Right. And and, and that shouldn't really go um, understated. Right. Because once you find your tribe, things start to click. I'm pretty sure you both can kind of speak to that. Right. In terms of things clicking, once you find that right, that core group of people to be around and the conversation somehow builds into something, something bigger. Um, how did you. Tim, you kind of alluded to the crazies, right? So I'm curious, like, how did you go about finding mm -hmm. your community, finding your tribe throughout this process? I mean, let, I, you know, thank you so much, Ken. That's a, a wonderful question. And, you know, it's, I've been having such a great time on this talk so far. So keep doing what you're doing, Ken. It, you know, I want to be very frank with you. I think that, you know, there's highs and lows of a business. You know, there's some days that they're really great, and there's some days where it's like, there's nothing happening. <laughs> like, that's okay. That's business, right? <laughs> You know, for me personally, I just try to remain level-headed as a business owner. But one of the things that's really worked for our brand and our business, and I've been so happy to see this, is we really optimize around our community. We just focus on them. We don't try to do more than we need to, but focus and invest in our community. Um, I often tell people there's two approaches that I think make any company successful. Uh, a company that invests in their people, whether it be their employers, so their internal people, right, investing in them. Um, however, making sure their well-being is, is right. And then it goes a little bit further than that, investing in their community. 
uh, which is investing in your customers, making sure that they have an amazing experience when they experience your brand, making sure you're delivering products that they actually need and want to use because there's a lot of products out there in the world, right? It's really hard to get intention, of course, but when you build something that's useful and your brand is reliable, it's trusted, that goes a long way. And, you know, there's a rule that we abide by at Guide, and I always ensure and I drive home with our team is keep things stupid simple. Uh, seriously, keep things stupid simple, not only for us, because we have to create processes on our end and all kinds of things, but really for our customers. Because if it's complicated to us, it's going to be complicated to our customers, right? So investing in our, in our community, our customers, and for us at our company, we just keep things really pragmatically simple because that allows us to scale in the direction of where uh, we're going. And, and uh, you know, on that note, um, you, you just touched on something there around uh, keeping things uh, stupid simple, right? And it, it, it almost seems counterintuitive, but it, it actually takes creativity to keep things simple, right? And not overthink. I, a lot of times uh, I even find myself having to kind of iterate through things only to find out that the initial version, right, that MVP, that minimum viable product that I came up with was probably what I should have went with, right, to gather mm -hmm. some feedback. So I, I want to flip, you know, flip a question to you, Carlene, in terms of, you know, we hear so much focus on the technology. We understand STEM degrees and the importance in, 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 in uh, education. Like, I, I think there has been a refocus on creativity, on the arts, on things like that. So I'm, I'm curious to know for sit a bit, you know, how have you like maybe worked some of the, the those creative exercises or some of those creative juices into um, the material that you're putting in, putting in front of kids? So you're right. I think you know the the, the whole creator community, the creator uh, focus, ex very much extends to kids. Um, you know kindergarten through high school age. And um, the ability to partner with folks that are helping kids develop things like, you know, online presence with integrity and security, and helping them learn the tools and the technology that are out there so that they can, you know, become uh, quality, constructive and valuable members as they grow up. So for us, we call ourselves the kid engagement company, enrichment company, where we bring together activities, virtual activities that expand all of these areas because schools in particular are cutting arts programs, they're cutting sports programs because of budget. And it's only getting worse as we start to have to adopt Things like, you know, new technologies for virtual learning in the school districts or smaller classes and the, and the schools are not getting the funding. So the fact that the tools are available to us, the technology is available to, to us and to those that don't have direct access to, it's um, a problem that can be solved to be able to get the mechanisms to the kids so that they can develop their their creative side. And it's not just, you know, regurgitating math equations anymore. And so for me as a founder, um, you know, the beginning of my career was in the creative field in advertising. And so being able to go back, take advantage of those skills, it's been really helpful to me. Utilizing tools that are available freely available out in the marketplace. So I think it's, it's I'm, as Tim said, I'm so excited to be creating something that's useful and helpful to people, but really more excited about the notion that folks are looking at their lives from a different, through a different lens and making different choices based on what is, um, allows them to lead a more, a, maybe a more fulfilling or a more balanced or a, a more community driven focus. I, I just, I love that as a silver lining to the pandemic. Thanks for that breakdown there. Um, and as you were speaking, Carlene, I was uh, thinking of my uh, 11 year old nephew 
and how he knows way more about a about an iPhone than I can yeah. ever know. Yeah. And I'm just like, like the way that he's just di- digesting all this information. It's like crazy, I need, right? I need pauses myself. I need ways, like mechanisms in my day to day, in order to come up with that. So it's going to be very interesting, right? As my 11 year old um, nephew comes into, you know, of age into adulthood, right? How he comes up with those those ways to to navigate all this yeah. information. Yeah. as being thrown at them. And you mentioned security. Like, that's one of the things I always think of. Yeah, cybersecurity. I joke because, uh, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, I, my son and I looked at each other and we collectively determined that I was the worst third grade teacher on the planet. So there was that. But then I also <laughs> immediately turned into the IT help desk, you know, mm-hmm. uh, with him, uh, which is something I also don't have skills in, but I do now. But over the course of the year, you know, I, he's he has self-taught himself um, using, you know, things like YouTube and videos. He can, you know, code himself a full virtual reality game. He doesn't need IT support. He, you know, the skills that he has learned over this past year because he wasn't in a structured classroom um, had it just been so eye-opening and i'm so proud because he wouldn't have learned any of that um having been in school or learned not nearly as much as as this past year so i think it's great it's incredible that's incredible (laughs) yeah it really is like i I can only imagine uh like again i'm always thinking of like 10 years down the road like how much these kids are gonna know like it's gonna it's gonna be scary right and we want to take the steps we, I don't say we want to, we have the opportunity right now to help these kids understand what it means to show up with integrity and honesty and to embrace the community and have respect for each other and be secure, you know, and know what cyber security is all about. And, and that's, those are the type of activity partners that we bring together in our marketplace. It's the whole child, um, not just the academic component. Okay. And uh, Tim, did you want to add anything to that? I did have a, uh, some follow-up. No, I, you know, I'm, 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 a, I'm a big supporter of what the team has did a bit too, just because, it, it, you know, we're a family-based business. Hey, guys, um, I, I, I mentioned this. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but a majority of our customer base are women with family. They are sisters. They are a mother's and you know for me i think a, a lot of what you know carlene is talking about from you know just talking about some of the trends that she's seeing with her own son <laughs> in terms of how how uh you know adaptive he is with technology and how aware he is with technology it really speaks to a trend with consumers in law lo- in, in large everyone wants to have a relationship with their tools but more importantly people want simple to use tools you know, my dad, you know, he's older in age. He, he doesn't have the, the best experience with technology just because he doesn't have the patience for it, to be honest with you. Um, and he, you know, often asks me questions of how can I help him with this and that and stuff like that. Sometimes I don't have time. Sometimes I do. So I help him. But it, it's not often people would assume that, oh, it's his fault. Like he doesn't know how to use this technology or it's confusing or he just needs help or he's old. But the reality is that technology, there's certain technology that still isn't as simple as you believe it is. It really isn't. So he needs my help. And I have to help them. And I think when you start humbling yourself as a technologist and also fundamentally as a humanitarian, you realize that, you know, there is still a huge opportunity. Um, if you're building a company or if you're building a tool to build something that works, it's useful, it's delightful for customers, but fundamentally it works, right? And, you know, it's, it's a huge value gain. And, you know, I kind of align with what, what she was kind of pointing out is that you have to find ways to meet people where they're at, whether it be kids to be honest with you, or it could be your mom or your dad, right? But, you know, we're, I think we're going to continue to see a trend uh, that, like, people still want tools that are, whether it be for their work, for their life, but at the end of the day, they're just simple to use. Definitely. I love, I love that, Tim. And uh, that, that definitely holds true to your, 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 your stupid simple, right? So um, yeah. it's been a consistent yeah. theme there, and I'm not mad at it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but next up, I, I looked at uh, both of your platforms uh, prior to. Uh, I really uh, just wanted to shout out if, if folks haven't check out the website. 
Uh, we'll be uh, posting those on the banners below and throughout the, the conversation. Amazing looking website. Uh, but one of the things that I noticed, um, I think for you, Carlene, yours was around at the top. You did have a company banner, right, where you're really speaking to, you know, uh, companies. And then for your pricing as well, Tim, I know there is a folk, there's like different tiers and, and there's a business enterprise tier. So I'm curious to know, uh, we, we've talked a lot around community and kind of having that power in the hands of the individual. But how are the, you know, how are the, the, the businesses, the companies that you both are speaking to, right? Because I know there's some B2B element there. Like, how, how are those conversations going and, and how are they understanding this whole empowerment at the individual level? Mm -hmm. I'll let Car uh, Carlene share a little bit about her insight and what she said. Yeah. Yeah, so our platform, the Citibit Market, um, is available for free to anyone, to any individual. Our primary customers are corporations who provide their employees access as an extension of existing child care benefits. So traditionally, companies offer child care benefits, companies that can offer child care benefits in the form of uh, discounts or stipends to daycares or nanny matching services. And our perspective is, well, childcare doesn't end there, right? When you graduate from daycare, it goes, you know, all the way through the point at which where we focus is the point at which, you know, they become young adults and graduate from high school or, or move forward. Um, and so we've, we find that companies are, whether it be because of the pressure that employees are putting on them, looking for expansion in child care benefits, or um, the adoption of a remote workforce where children are home and interrupting the workday of the family, that more and more companies are looking to support their employees more holistically. And that's not just child care. That's, you know, t you know with, um, what Guide is doing around learning and development. It's, um, you know, financial well-being. It's mental well-being. It's all of those sort of benefits that are beyond um, the core health care, um, vision, dental type situation. Um, and I think, you know, my heart bleeds really right now for HR organizations because they're, you know, they're trying so desperately to support families where they are, right, which is wonderful, but it's almost like they're playing on a field that continues to move, right? So mm -hmm. a week and a half ago, everybody, you know, mo many companies had their plans in place, whether they were going to return to the office, part-time remote, full-time remote, whatever it was. And, you know, with things that are shifting within the last week, two weeks, a lot are revisiting that. So, which has this sort of larger implication to um, what are we offering as support to our employees and what do we need to do as fast as possible. So, um, but I do see, um, and I talk to a lot of HR leaders in all kinds of sizes of companies, huge global enterprises, all the way down to small um, small companies. And the overriding um, perspective is we are fully prepared and want very much to support um, a more holistic approach to how we support our families and employer, employees. So it's great. It's it's really positive. Great point. Yeah, great great points there, Carlene. And, and, and I appreciate you bringing up HR. That's one of the spaces, right? If you go on LinkedIn or any of these social media platforms where you have really seen an influx of diverse talent, uh, because like you said, that during this pandemic, HR has really been tasked right, with coming up with some of these solutions and, and they're willing to experiment and try different things out. Right. But yeah. part of the part, part of it to, to what you just alluded to is you got to have, you know, uh, diversity of thought at that table that's making those decisions. So I, yeah. I, I agree with you spot on there. I want to pass it to Tim because it looked like Tim was going to uh, chime in as well. Yeah, man, she, you know, Carson, you're saying some really powerful stuff because, you know, we are we're seeing the same thing, 
we're literally seeing the same thing on, on our end as a business. And I want to say this important when, when we talk about kind of the holistic, holistic benefits, she kind of really touched on like human resources is now thinking holistically. You know, one of the biggest things that I've noticed uh, as a business owner is that there's very few, um, how do I say this? There's very few uh, companies actually that think holistically, right? Like I, I meet business owners sometimes that, you know, they're always like, they're always like spread too thin, right? Or they're always like, they're always focused on that next big thing or that new shiny object, which isn't the best way to build a business. But when you talk to human resources professionals, when you talk to the people who are HR admins or they have their CHROs and you listen to them, they care about their people, right? They might have execs or CEOs that maybe aren't the best, but they care about the people. And when I think about us at Guy, we are literally just in the business of serving people, right? And ensuring that they can train and onboard without friction. And, and our value proposition is simple and under 90 seconds or less. And the thing is, our tool solves that problem. And more importantly, we believe that at the end of the day, we're a great holistic solution, even now, right? Obviously, you evolve, you add new features, you do all kinds of things to, to be better for the customer. But even now, we, we have a really strong value proposition. So for me, you know, really going back to what Carlene is saying, you can tell she's been talking to her customers, is HR people are thinking holistically, you know, and there are great CEOs, the best CEOs that I know, they're also thinking holistically as well. They're not just only looking at one end of the puzzle, they're looking at the whole picture and they're moving the direction forward. And when, when I say moving their, moving their company in the direction forward, that means they're people. They like, they have to think holistic about how do we support our people, not just with a one-time solution or a one-time tool, but a tool that one has a strong value proposition. And at the end of the day, my HR team can use it for, you know, a, a good holistic solution for our people. And 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 that's what I've been I've been hearing the same exact thing that, that Carlene. Appreciate you echoing that. And you know, as you were talking, Tim, I can think of um a couple of industries. One big industry that comes to mind though is retail. Retail is typically an industry that's been kind of a laggard when it comes to development. And uh, like retaining talent, you can imagine what the attrition numbers are in, 100%. in, in a, a space like retail, right? And over the last year, what you've seen is that a lot of these retailers are saying, "Hey, we'll we'll you know we'll we'll sponsor completely programs like the Google Certs. We'll like cover education costs completely, right?" And that's where we're starting to get into that that holistic approach that Carlene, you really uh, you know started us off with on the, around this uh, this question where it's really just not truly about the the dollar amount that you pay me and whether you give me medical coverage yeah. a lot of those a lot of those topics that have traditionally been like you know the the topics of what compensation is like those are expected now right like right. we're expected yeah. for you to pay me yeah. for what i'm worth yeah. right and we're yeah. expected to have certain benefits right that's one of the i think the joys of uh yeah. being in, in america but then on top of that you know like what are some of those benefits that I, I think some of the companies can actually start to to leverage as ways to kind of get talent to to be kind of attracted to being there, right? We gotta you you spoke to it earlier, Carlene. We gotta make it kind of cool to work at some of these places. We know the the tech companies they figure that out, right? They got all the swag, they got everything <laughs> like in place. They got merch, but it's gonna be very interesting over the over the next few years to see some of these industries that have typically been laggards and losing talent see how they can flip that switch and retain talent. I think a company like yours, Carlene, or even yours, Tim, really kind of, kind of starts to check the box for them on that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kenny. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. And, and <laughs> you know, if I can add, just add, you brought up retail, and I would add to that, you know, hospitality and, and you know, any of these, the restaurant industry, the you know, a lot of the arts industry. Um, and, you know, for us in our organization, uh, the the issues that exist around childcare as a whole um, is really my soapbox issue. But I can't fix. You know, we can't fix it all. We've chosen a piece of this. But when you think about what the infrastructure programs are that are coming out of the federal government and the aid that's coming, fundamentally, if Folks that have to be in person at a job don't have access to affordable and available quality childcare. Then we are 
going to continue to be at a disadvantage in trying to rebuild our communities and our economy. Because if folks cannot go to work because their children are home without child care because schools are part-time virtual, well, then we failed families or we failed children or we failed our ability to quickly rebuild our communities and help um, folks get back into the workforce. So um, we're very passionate about the fact that child care, you know, is an infrastructure, it's a core service like, you know, roads and, and I don't mean to get political, but it is absolutely fundamental to the way that this country works. And without it, um, some of these industries, as you're mentioning, will continue to um, to struggle with rebuilding, and that's unfortunate. So, mm. I think you just dropped the gym, Carlene. I feel like there was I feel like there were a couple of gyms in there, but just you, you know, like the when it comes to infrastructure, like you mentioned, we all see the news, right? We don't even have to get political. We see the news. We see how much money. Like we're not talking about M's, we're not talking about B's. A lot of times we're talking about like T's, trillions of dollars, right? Mm-hmm. We're throwing at some of these, uh, some of these uh, ways to to keep the economy going, right? And so for you to really equate childcare and that and and you know that space in terms of infrastructure, I think that's that's a gem. That's a gem, Carlene. There, Tim, that's were you gonna? That was so far. <laughs> you no, be on over soapbox however you yeah, want carlene yeah no please it's, it's uh <laughs> this is what podcasts are for right um no i think you know carlene hit her really hit her on the head you know i to, to be very frank with you i think you know a lot of the you know i i i meet a lot of business leaders i talk to a lot of business i see a lot of business leaders on linkedin and um just in, in real life and you know i think many of them are always interested in the next big thing the, the new shiny object that uh, that you know everyone is wooing over, right? Uh, a few years ago, it was kind of like blockchain. Um, nowadays, it's the application of blockchain, cryptocurrency. Um, and, you know, now it's the metaverse. It's the biggest conversation that I'm seeing pop up on my feed and just um, at large. And, and you know, the reality is that you know technology comes and goes. I've been in technology for too long now, to, and I've seen a lot of changes. It comes and goes. New trends happen, right? New um, values created here and there. New applications exist. But when you actually just like take all of that away and you just like you just really go back to the basics and look at your business, you realize well the the best thing that holds is a strong brand, great trust, and really just focusing on your customers, right? Because you know we have. I'm a technology. I I, I and I'm also a very analog person. I have a million ideas a, a day on what we can build for our business like really great technology, things that everyone and anyone can use. But the reality is that sometimes I have to peel back and tell myself, well, some of that stuff isn't even useful for our customers. So no, we're not going to launch that. We're not going to build that. We're not going to invest in that. It's not worth our time. And I believe when you start to think like this and you put your customer hat on, you realize that at the end of the day, what you need to fundamentally do as an operator, as a CEO, is go back to the basics. Right. What is the value to your people? Because they are also your customers. And what is the value to out, from like the outside of your business, which is the people who are on your social media, who are always posting about you and, and sharing um, your content and, and, you know, are a part of your brand following and, and have so much loyalty to what you're doing. What matters to them? Build for that, because if, if you're building for that, you know, you'll never be led astray. And I, I really want to ensure that people, you know, if you're tuning in and listening, and your owner, or you want to become a business owner, think like that. Yeah. No Spot on there, Tim. And, and uh, that's a perfect segue, Tim, around, uh, you know, just the space of entrepreneurship and the state it's in right now. We do know, um, you know, just with the pandemic, people are, you know, I've said this a, a lot of times on our on our platform, people are taking gambles on themselves more and more. And so that, that what that means is that people are really wearing that, um, you know, this entrepreneur hat. So I'm curious, you know, uh, to still one of your terms, uh, Tim, how the future of work looks right in terms of, um, you know, I don't I don't feel like and you kind of spoke to this, Carlene, earlier around what's in our heart. I kind of feel like in my heart, entrepreneurship is here to stay. And a lot of folks, e- even if they had that nine to five, they're going to be 
you know, having their own business, whether it's them selling merch, whether it's, Mm -hmm. you know, a a physical product that they're selling. I'm seeing all types of people really take that gamble on themselves. And so I I just want to know how you guys feel, you both feel around, you know, this landscape of entrepreneurship, where where you see it currently at and where you think it's moving uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to lead off of that, I believe that entrepreneurship is alive as well. I believe in the big economy. I believe in the independent workforce. And we have to keep that. We have to keep it alive, um, to be honest with you, because small to medium business owners make up a majority of our economy, simply put, in the United States. And it's not only just that. It's the, it's the reality that there's so many tools now that exist for people to go into the, into business for zero dollars. I mean, come yeah. on. Like it's, totally. let's, just, let's just be... Let's be very frank here. And the, the thing is, we need to continue building a safety net around entrepreneurs, actually. Um, similar to how we build a safety net around uh, the aging, um, our aging workforce, right? And people who are um, getting ready for retirement. We actually need to do the same thing for entrepreneurs. And obviously, I think I love companies that do that in the form of um, small to medium business credits, um, grants, and, and just creating community for entrepreneurs. I believe it's going to continue to, to, to thrive. Um, I think what what's often scares me is corporate bureaucracy because I see it a lot. Um, and be, 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 keep this in mind, I'm building a corporation myself. And corporate bureaucracy in the sense of, you know, there's still companies that exist that are more extractive and they actually take advantage of entrepreneurs yeah. as small medium business, business owners. And I mean, let's just be frank here. Uber is a classic case study of this, of them taking advantage of taxi drivers and not being not being willing to pay them fair wages. That's just wrong. <laughs> There's nothing like and like not treating them as human beings. There's nothing that's you know that's right about that. You're you know, you're those are human beings that are doing work for you and they're actually the core driver of your business, but you don't want to treat them fairly? That's wrong. Like, and I, I mean and some I think I often hear people that try to justify it, but it's wrong and that's extractive. And you don't want to build. You don't. You don't want to build a business, and you don't want to be in that type of business. And more fundamentally, we don't need an economy of businesses like that in my. Hold on, Carlin. Did you want to add to that? Yeah, the the, the piece that I would add um, to what Tim says about it, entrepreneurship and then um, being alive, and couple that sort of with, you know, what I had said earlier about this the, the silver lining pandemic that folks are actually you know feeling like they have the space to decide what their future work you know in life is about and i i have spoken to a lot of founders that i've met through twitter and other communities that have decided in this moment to start their own company whether it be a side gig or what have you um because because of the pandemic, because they've, they have an issue or a problem or a pain point that they themselves have accepted for such a long period of time. And almost, I, I call it the enough moment, right? Because that's the way I look at it for me and where I got enough. I, I, I know that I can fix this. You know, maybe my company will fail, maybe it won't, I don't know. But I know that it's plausible for me to fix it because I know about technology. I know about the pain that I have. And I know that there are tons and tons of others that are also dealing with this. So um, what I think is really good about what's happened in the past year is there's been this whole, you know, navel grazing or gazing, whatever you call it, you know, activity where people really just say, you know, I don't have to live like that. And I've wanted to do this for a really long time. Why am I not doing it now? And I think that's really great. I love that, Carlene. I, I just took another note. I feel like you're you're using our platform to drop gems, the enough moment. I don't know why, but that just stuck out to me, right? Like, there's just these situations that we're in, right? We feel like we can do it, and uh, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta shout out one comment because Brooke chimed in and corrected me. It's not a gamble. We the best. Uh, I don't have my, I can't put on my DJ Khaled voice, but it, it really is something where once we go through these situations, we we start to acknowledge, 
you know, all the strengths that we have, all the experiences that we have, and that's really currency in this current environment. I, I don't think we say that enough. Um, but I just wanted to throw that out there. Thanks for chiming in there, Brooke. Again, Brooke has been an amazing partner over at Belorit um, and, and, and continues to support us, um, you know, and bringing this content to the world. Um, my final question for you both um, is actually our sponsor question uh, brought to you by our partners at Valorit. Um, Again, uh, they've been amazing partners for us, but this is a question we ask every founder, right? And, and so uh, we came up with this idea around world domination, right? We all want to dominate the world, put your pinky out, you know, do that little thing right there. <laughs> but, you know, what does world domination look like for, for you for you both um, mm -hmm. and your businesses you could do over the next year if you had that you know, you had that North Star, like what does the world domination look like for you both? At, at Guy, we, we really talk from the lens of um, daily domination, not world <laughs> We keep it every day. <laughs> yeah. I say this because, I mean, we're we're a great business. We're good. We're solid. Um, we've been in a good position for too long, um, to be honest with you. And, you know, we're, we're going to, I mean, we're, we're, we're going to grow. Growth is, um, what, what is the word called? It is expected. Um, when it comes to business, but the reality is that are we growing in the right direction, right? Uh, growth is inevitable. So world domination for us is actually really simple is what are our customers saying? Are they happy? Are we moving in the right direction? Are they still like, do they still trust us? And I really want to go back to saying trust is really important because there's case studies of brands that have no trust, um, but they have, uh, you know, they have a great brand. Right, like no one really trusts them. They're always in the news for all kinds of things, but they have a great brand, which is cool. So world domination for them is just like being in business, staying in business, like keeping the keeping that train moving. But for me, um, as a founder and as a business owner, right, and someone that's steering our company, I think for us, I really want our customers to be delighted and be in community with us. I want them to feel as if like, you know, God is, you know, it's a part of my my life. Um, and it's not I'm not just giving money to guide, right? Um, to, to have a great day and because it has this software and they have this tea, but I really see them being involved in my community. I see, you know, I, I see their mission. I feel their mission versus them being on just like a, a TV screen or on a billboard. You know, I, I think, you know, there's a lot of companies like that. We all know, we all know their names. But we even use some of them, but that's not the type of company that we're trying to build at guys. So world domination for us, I think the plainly put is daily domination. Um, and, and just focusing on customers every single day that we wake up. Yeah. Thanks for that, Tim. Really What's your version of that uh, look like, Carlene? Yeah, I mean, I, Tim, I, I think, you know, I, I echo so many of the sentiments that he talked about. The type of company that I want to build is, you know, it, it, it's based on integrity, right? I, I You know, I have a nine-year-old, and I, I tell him all the time, listen, I don't, I don't really care what you do with the rest of your life. You want to go to college? Great. You want to go live in an ashram in India? Fine. Whatever. You want to go be a surfer? As long as you're, you have integrity, you're honest, and you're kind, right? Um, and that's the culture that I want to build as a company. Now, clearly, as a founder, you know, I want to build a company that's um, growing, uh, revenue generating, is... Um, you know, driving returns for our investors and so forth. Um, and beyond that, you know, really supporting uh, families, uh, mostly because this is very personal to me and something that I have lived through for so long as a single parent. I personally know how difficult it is, parent, you know, single parent, um, multi caregiver household doesn't matter. It, it, it's just it's so much, and to make it easier for families, and then you know, longer term, it's how do I, as a human being, and my company impact um, more broadly the availability of uh, quality care for children in underprivileged communities. So that means a lot of things access to technologies, access to activities, enriching activities, um, co-sponsoring programs that are helping kids in neighborhoods that don't have access to become, you know, um, cybersecurity professionals or that they're better equipped to enter the workforce or a 
apply for college or being able to take what I'm building as a company and have a much broader cultural impact is something um, that would equate to world domination. I like it. Carlene, appreciate you both sharing, uh, you know, um, what that means for you. That can mean, again, that's a dynamic question. It can mean whatever you want it to mean for your business. We've had some founders come on and, you know, it's the billion dollars. It's the, you know, that kind of world domination. But for you both, it seems like you're really focusing on your community and that impact right now, which which is always a pleasure to hear. Um, you know, in closing, you know, I just want to uh, thank you both for really coming on our platform. Like, uh, Carlene, you mentioned it, you know, leveraging the soapbox. Beyond Normal is a soapbox, right, for, for founders, yeah. diverse founders to, to hop on that soapbox and say what you need to be said. Um, you know, I want to pass it to you both each one more time. You know, just let folks know how they can keep, you know, stay in contact with you, mm-hmm. connect with the brand, you know, stay up to date on all the things that are going on with, with, with Citibit and uh, Guide App. Sure. Um, so if you're interested in learning about our company, we can be found at citibit.net. The marketplace is citibitmarket.com. Um, it's free for anyone to sign up. Um, there are, if you wanted to contact me directly, any of the email links, info at um, founder at citibit.net. Um, I'm on Twitter and Facebook uh, and LinkedIn. Um, please any questions or comments, feel free to connect with me and uh, uh, I can uh, make sure you're taken care of over at the marketplace. So Kenny, I want to thank you um, for just such a a hosting a great platform for founders to come on and share their stories. So truly grateful. Uh, And Tim, you know, I love you. So (laughs) (laughs) Uh, there's nothing more I need to say there. Oh, thank you, Carly. <laughs> With that said, you know, to, to share a little bit more about Guy, you know, guygroup.com is our new home. Uh, you know, we recently went through a rebrand a couple months ago, actually, around April. And, you know, we eventually have a, a new skin to our site, a new home to our site. And we are gearing, gearing to go into public preview for our software uh, line of business. And, you know, it's going to, you know, we've been, you know, we've been incubating the that line of business for quite some time now, just making sure things are right and ready for scale. And we're excited for where we're going. Um, and, you know, we're just really excited to see the lifestyle around our business. I mean, we have so many amazing people who are a part of our community. And, I, I mean, our focus, focus is to just how do you continue to serve them? Like, it's, it's really that simple just because they believe so much in what we're doing. And we want to really make sure that you know, we're going uh, a, a mile long, them the way that they show up for us every time. Thanks for that uh, breakdown there, Tim, uh, and Carlene as well. Um, again, two amazing founders. Definitely wanted to have you on. Uh, appreciate, you know, Tim making the connection initially with, with you, Carlene. Um, you, you know, like like you both have touched on, just focusing on the community. Um, you know, that, that that's very, like, near and dear to our hearts over at Beyond Normal. So just wanted to uh, Thank you both for leveraging our platform, for the folks who've been chiming in. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for engaging. We had an amazing engagement throughout the conversation. Uh, our team behind the scenes is, is always keeping things rocking and rolling as well. So I want to thank them too. Um, and outside of that, just want to say thanks for tuning in to a, another episode of the Beyond Normal Podcast. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Beyond Normal podcast. We can be streamed across all major streaming platforms in addition to YouTube. Come back again.